Welcome, everybody, to another side special episode of a Depth's Ridiculous podcast. I am Bricky. Joining us is both DK and a mystery guest who we will reveal in the future. But before we start, I want to thank everyone so much for uh, the support over on patreon.com slash Ridiculous. We've actually got a new Patreon goal. At uh, the big 17K, we will be talking about the Dornian Heresy, which is a, a fun little fan fiction side note that we've been asked to discuss. And, well, there's a whole freaking codex written about it, so should be uh, should be all, all exciting to get to. So that's our next major goal. If you'd like to see that, check us out on Patreon. You can also find the brand new poster. It has an ad mech with tits holding a, a toaster. All right, so, you know, just go, fuck you. And, um, Whoa, and I think it's classy. DK, you're interrupting my intro. I don't interrupt your intros. Sorry. <laughs> and, um, uh, crap. Um, uh, ah, screw it. DK, tell them where they find merch. <laughs> Orchid8.com, where you can get some sick merch. Also, uh, the dice are back. Uh, we've seen uh, a bunch of tweets of people showing off their dice. Uh, I saw someone bought 50 of them, uh, so you might, you might want to get on it because the dice appear to be popular and going rather quickly. So Orchid8.com, uh, that link is in the description. So yeah, mm -hmm. good stuff. Um, they also, uh, they, they also come in packs of, um, of, I believe, 15... Is it 1525 and, 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 uh, or is it 1025 and 50? I'm the one who runs this merch site. I should really know this. I was going to say, what are you asking me for? You run the damn thing, dude. You don't check out our merch, DK. You don't, you don't, you don't try our merch. I have all of our, well, okay. I have the I'm a tank, I'm a tank, uh, green hoodie, which I love. It is one of my favorites. Actually, good thing we brought up the I'm a tank orc shirt today, huh? huh? Ah, good point. Huh? I, I found uh, it out. It's uh, it, it's in coins of 10, 25, and 50. That gets cheaper in, in overall cost the higher you go. But yes, nice. um, orcs. What what orcs. a what a transition. What a dean came in. I'm so proud of You're you. You're welcome. Thanks. Um, yeah, all right, all right, DK. Remember how last time we had a guest, they were in our walls. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're I feel still like there. If, I feel like if we're doing an orc episode, it's curious still there. I feel like if they're we're still... doing an orc episode, they're not in the walls. They're actually kind of blowing through the walls. Like, they're on the other oh, side yeah. of the wall, but that wall won't be a wall for very long. Yeah, they're repurposing the walls into a gun. This poor, poor Nate has just been listening to us talk like <laughs> this for the last three minutes. Hey, Nate, how's it going, buddy? Oh, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm good. How are you? You know, it's <laughs> doing all right. <laughs> nice, nice intro, guys. Like, oh, yeah, orcs are in the wall. Oh, poor <laughs> Nate. Hey, Nate. Hey, <laughs> hey, Nate, welcome. Jo joining <laughs> us on this episode for this book club is... Uh, GW and Black Library author Nate Crowley, who just so happened to write not only the Gasco Throcka book we are talking about today, but also the two Twice Dead King books that we've talked about in the past. Welcome, our friend. Hello. I've been enjoying relaxing here in the walls with the orcs. It's been good. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. What's it like being in the walls with other orcs? Really... There's a really intense odor. Um, <laughs> that's I think that's the main thing to point out. It's quite loud. A lot of flailing yeah. arms. Mm. You know. No. Yeah, okay. We, we're we're still good on the orc side of things. Um, yeah. Glad to, glad to have you here. We're uh, excited to to have some discussion. I'm sure we'll veer into the twice dead realm once or twice on the way. Mm. Around, but uh, we'll do our best Maybe. to keep it to keep it gas related. Mm-hmm. Um, happy to talk anything, anything Xenos. It's uh, that seems to be what I've been doing recently. So yeah, just uh, wherever we go. Out of curiosity, is that uh, intentional or just that like, you just ended up writing some Xenos stuff and you're like, hey, this is cool, and you kept going, or? Yeah, partially luck, and then it fit well for me. But I guess that's it's a big point of interest for me. I really like. I mean, obviously, I'm interested in Imperium stuff because that's kind of at the core of the setting. But I really like uh sort of outside perspectives looking in on that i guess whether it's from like non-standard imperial points of view or yeah obviously like the xenos factions so yeah it's always been like the way i like to look at the setting best and so it's been cool that, that seems to be where i'm i'm slotting in right now at least as an author interesting so i guess that kind of translates pretty well into oh. the gaz book because the gaz book isn't from the perspective of Gaz, it's perspective of 
the Imperium Mortal Xenos interviewing Makari. So it's kind of like that yeah. outside kind of vibe. Yeah, so it's... Um, I had real fun working out how I was going to tell the story because Gazgul's story has been told a lot. Um, like I've been an Orc player ever since I got into 40k, which would have been in like 95. Um, oh, wow. So they've... Yeah, they're, they're huge for me. I love those guys. And I've heard Gazgul's story so many times over the years. And like, obviously, Armageddon is, is one of the most told sort of war stories in the setting. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was thinking, well, what's, what's a fresh in on this? And Makari has obviously been omnipresent as Gaz's banner waver, apart from when he disappeared for a few editions. And so he seemed like a really fun way into the character and you know of course the the interrogation framing narrative is always a a really fun one to play with and since i was going to be playing a lot with sort of ideas of truth and belief and things in this it seemed a you know a fun place to be able to fuck around with that yeah i i i liked how it was framed because usually with like an orc book like, uh, it'll go from the orc perspective, and the orcs will be just the funniest goddamn thing to read on the planet. They'll be over the top and doing their orky thing, and then it'll go to, like, the humans, and they'll be just so dry. And yeah. it'll just be like, oh my god, please get back to the orcs. I, mm. um, But the interrogation felt, like, really nicely paced, because when you go back to, like, uh, the interrogation, and Cassia, and Falks, and Hendrickson, uh, their almost stunned disbelief at what Makari's telling them is just as amusing as orky bullshit. Uh, so I, 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 I quite enjoyed the interrogation, going back to the interrogation and hearing like their reactions to like Gaz ripping a, a, a Squig's tongue out, or his guts out through his tongue to warm the snow, and yeah. It's, it's very, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I was, I was thinking of the Conan moment a little bit with that. Uh, yeah, it, it was, it was nice. The jumping back to the entire, I mean, naturally my favorite parts of the book were the Makari telling, um, the VA did a phenomenal job. Right. I, yeah. I really enjoyed all the, the stuttering he did and all that, like the, how he was able to kind of really sell that concept and it's just, I, I remember giggling my ass off during the vision scene when he just had like, this echoed voice the whole way through. <laughs> yeah. It, but um, combining with that, it just, he was able to, I think, really help reflect. Oh, I, we should probably say what the book is about and how to like. It's about Gaskell. Yeah, no shit. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? So, so, you so paying attention the, the, at all? The book takes place on an Ordo Xenos vessel and it is a, a, a complete. Interrogation of Makari, Banner Waver of Gaskell, by a uh, Lord Inquisitor of the Ordo Xenos, a Death Watch Space Wolves uh, Rune Priest, a Ogren Psyker, we'll cut, talk about that later, and um, and the Blood Axe Orc. Uh, Nate, can you give us the full name of the Orc again? <laughs> uh, yeah, as I recall, it bites face of the face biter before it can bite face. Uh, but they call him Biter for short. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's good, a, it's a good nickname. <laughs> such a blood axe name too. It, it, yeah. it, it got me a giggle. I'm actually sad you never said it twice. I think you only mentioned it the first time. And I'm, he's I'm actually, a little. Uh, he's in another story of mine um, where they go into a bit of detail about his name. Actually, uh, it was the really? first thing I wrote for Black Library uh, was a short story called "The Enemy of My Enemy," which is about this sort of real sad sack. Um, guard officer who's stuck in an interminable trench war against these orcs on this completely useless planet uh, and then basically a high fleet tendril shows up out of nowhere Ooh. and he attempts in a last ditch attempt to sort of get a win to his name uh, attempts to negotiate uh, a ceasefire with the orcs so they can fight the Tyranids together and uh the his opposite number uh, is a character that bears some striking resemblances uh, to Biter in Gasgul. Um So yeah, he's. Um, I I don't think it's going to be a huge spoiler to anyone who's read it, but yeah, he's uh, he he makes an appearance in that story. That's fun. I had no I had no idea about that. How long ago did you write that book? 
Uh, that would have been, I think, 2019. Um, yeah, because oh. oh. I went straight on to Severed after that, and then Twice Dead King, and then Gaskell. So pretty recently, actually. Yeah, yeah, this is... Uh, le- yeah, it would have been... Right, because it was the... I. My first sort of physical event with Black Library was right after Severed came out in the autumn of 19. So... Yeah, Enemy of My Enemy came out either at the beginning of that year or at the end of 2018. Ah, uh, pre-pandemic memories. Yeah, good, right? good times, yeah. you know. The a- Interesting, I actually uh, didn't realize that your writing, um, writing career had started so recently to Twice Dead and all that. I, uh, I thought there was a couple more before that, but interesting. So it's, so it's Enemy of My Enemy severed both Twice Deads and then Gas, so this is your fifth, and I'm assuming you're probably working on a sixth at the moment. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, but, but working on a couple of things at the the moment. There was also another short story I did called Emperor, uh, which is <laughs> spelled E M P R A. I was about to say, it sounds like an orc thing. <laughs> yeah, yep. N- no, that's about um, like Bronze Age tribes people on a feral world who've been hoodwinked into ah. refitting an Imperial starship, uh, void ship oh. rather. Uh, it was okay. based on like. There was a paragraph of flavor text in the Battlefleet Gothic rulebook in like 1998 saying that, you know, usually it takes so and so years to build a lunar class cruiser, but it depends on the world. Like, you know, in a feral world, for example, it can take millennia um, because people are having to build the parts by hand on the surface. And I've been thinking about that for, yeah, like 20 years. (laughs) So (laughs) that was a really fun story. That was, uh, oh. Oh goodness! All right. Um, Whoa! Shy wants in. <laughs> you want to read it, Bricky? Yeah, I'll read it. Mini shy book review. As an orc fan and collector of a seven thousand point golf army, yes. Gaz Gaz book is pretty must uh, pretty must have for orc fans and specifically old school orc fans. It is fun and oh, oh, this is actually a review. Wow, this is not as sassy as I thought it would be. It's fun and well written, <laughs> but more importantly, it covers a lot of things that have been discussed in orc community for a long time. It covers some weird plot holes with Gaz and his obsession with Armageddon. Shines more light on his on Makarian's deaths and undeaths. Gives Grotznik actual personality and also contains some big insights of orc lore, orc gender, power, belief, <clears throat> and many other orc things. Plus, Humies in the book are goddamn morons and they get outplayed hardcore orcs, 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 and that, you, I mean, she, yeah, she's our resident, like, orc expert, so if she is singing the praises, then, uh, you know, I'd say that's that's, that's pretty high praise, yeah. Her, her her opinion was by far the l- most important one that you had to wow in this book. You know, like, me and DK and Choi are, are orc stuff, and DK does a, a fucking killer orc impression, but mm. uh, she was the most important person you had to wow. So good job, dude. Yes. Nice. I was happy to hear the old school thing as well, because like I say, it, it goes way back for me and this, you know, well, pretty much what Shai said there is what I was setting out to hopefully achieve. It's just a love letter to, you know, orcs in the 90s and and I guess how how they've evolved since then. I, I, I would agree. The um I also, uh, I, mu- I must admit, cause like, like, yeah, I mean, actually DK, thoughts on the book? Particularly, you know, like what's your what's your review, my friend? My review? Oh wow! <laughs> I care about your opinion today. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, someone does. Um, I I enjoyed it. I I I love a good orc story, and I am relatively new to Warhammer 40k as far as like our little crew is concerned. So I wasn't as keenly aware of like Makari or like Gazka, like I've heard of them. Uh, and about as much as I had heard of Makari was like, uh, I remember everybody being upset when like he accidentally got sat on or something and that's how he died. Um, so getting a much more in-depth like view of like Makari and Gazka's like origins was like, it was, it was fantastic. Um, Uh, The only, one of the little gripes I had was it did seem maybe a little too Uh, Mm Makari-centric. Because I I went into the book expecting, like, you know, it's called Gaskell, uh, Prophet of the Wasp. So I was expecting it to be more like from Gaskell's perspective, uh, which it does eventually become his perspective kind of towards the later end. But it seemed like it was a much more like, uh, it almost seemed more focused on, like, Makari and his thoughts and um, all that. But... 
as as Shai has told me countless times, you you can't have Gaz without Makari, and Makari is basically an extension of Gaz. So true. No, that's I, I valid think... though, because it was like a big. I was wrestling with that a lot while writing it because you're right. You know, the, his his name's on the cover, but it's like Gaz Girl POV was going to be like the most sort of potent venom I had, I guess, mm. and I didn't want to blow it blow it all too soon but then i didn't want him to be kind of viewed too distantly and remotely as well so yeah that was a kind of a tightrope uh tightrope act to write and that's yeah i think that's fair enough i i think i think that was yeah that was the thing that was more of an expectation changer uh mm -hmm. like if if the book was had makari say on the on the cover art and the name of it was gazkul comma my boss i don't know like <laughs> i feel like like that kind of would like oh, okay it's it's like told in the perspective i kind of would have prepared me um, as to see that was more of a Makari saying it, but it was one of those things where you, you kind of like scratch your head a little bit uh, when you read it, but then by the time you finish, you're like, okay, I see the point of it. You know, it just kind of throws you off in the beginning. Um, I, I actually, I thoroughly enjoyed the book. Um, I almost, I actually, I gotta admit, I think you, you write comedy better than you think you do. And oh, I, I, I feel like, because there are certain points in the book that are actually very comedic and were obviously set up jokes and, and i liked them quite a bit um i, I just kind of wish there was more um though i must admit the va did, did help with that we were mentioning just a bit ago that mm -hmm. there's a great part where it's like uh makari says and then gaz had a plan and then immediately hard cuts to i've got a plan explain Gaz. <laughs> yeah. like that stuff was very good it added a, a real real enjoyable amount of levity um but i also really I think I think this is the slime that I, I say with almost every every book is whenever they they involve orcs. Uh, I wish I got more. I wish I had more orc dialogue because some of the parts mm -hmm. that I laughed the hardest at were the parts where like Biter was was uh, not Biter. Um, bullets was just killing grots and he's like Makari crushes Ooh, the rock next, next. <laughs> and just just over and over. Or when Gaz points up to the sky, it's like how are we gonna fight clouds? Like that, that that shit got me rolling. It was it was great. I kind of wish there was a bit more of that, but I also realized that Gaz is not that kind of orc. He's like the it's, tough orc, different. It's orc. funny you say actually the um, because I did what I uh, so funny story. The Twice Dead King books um were originally uh, one book that I wrote so massively over length um that we end up having a conversation. Of, about it being two books and that's that's something ah. i that's kind of my my thing i just i i can't restrain myself with word count and uh so the original draft of gaskell was really really long um and the eventual product needed to be well the size it is so quite a bit of stuff ended up um i won't say cut because i'm saving it i think it's um there's definitely a use for some of it but uh, it, a lot of that stuff focused around bullets and the other clan bosses who Gaz ah, had kind of rounded mm. together because they had a lot of a lot of fun scenes, but it was mostly just them being fun idiots at one another. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm yeah, I'm keeping that, some of that stuff in reserve. And then I did the um, the Grotznik story at Christmas as well, which ties in with this. Uh, you know, you hear about the big submarine attack on Armageddon where the orcs made loads of submersibles to cross under <laughs> yeah. the big chemical sea. <laughs> yes. uh, so like that story is it's the framing devices in the present where Grotznik is stitching Gazgul back together after the Space Wolves incident but it flashes back to an occasion where he was bringing Gazgul back from a fatal seizure uh, while the submarines were slamming onto the peaches, beginning the assault, uh, uh, and that, that was that, such a fun story. <laughs> that 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 sounds like it have an enjoyable, uh, very orky twist with it. You know, it it's interesting that you said a lot of the rounding up the war boss stuff got cut because I remember reading that part and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool, like watching him go to the different war bosses and kind of like hearing Makari talk about like how he bested them and uh, how Makari got kind of, uh, he had to hold on for dear life during that race. And then like for the last ones, they were just like, oh, okay, you know, uh, we're, we're just going to assume Gaskell uh, beat the shit out of them. We can move on. I was like, wow, that was a little, that was kind of abrupt. 
I, I do. <laughs> I, like, I, I do appreciate the the um, the explanation for it though, because there is nothing yeah. that a space wolf hates more than someone else talking about how cool they are. <laughs> fair, also very fair. Um, also, back on the the comedy thing, I uh, I love the way the narrator did. Uh, I think I think it was Hendrickson was like, "You'll tell us about Gazkol, Gazkol." And uh, Makari very viscerally just started making fun of the way that uh, they pronounce Gazgul, like Gazgul. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the He's Makari so... <laughs> narrator was pheno- was phenomenal. He had a good time with the role, I could tell. Mm-hmm. Paul Putner was the guy, and he's he's a comedian, um, which I think made him a great choice. And like you know, I I I think uh, Richard Reed talked about this when you had him on the show. Uh, like as authors, we don't really get to talk with the VAs. Um, we we might talk with the production team a little bit about pronunciation and things, uh, but it was pretty much sight unseen for me. And so when I heard the first uh, reels that they'd, that they'd recorded, I was just delighted because Paul completely nailed how Makari had sounded in my head. Um, well, I was sorry. So I grew up in London. Um, like quite a manky bit of southeast London, and Macari to me sounded like every sort of, you know, bulldog faced old gargoyle who would hang around the local <laughs> boozer, looking like he wanted to murder everyone around him. And <laughs> the fact that Paul managed to channel that so perfectly in the way Macari spoke was, yeah, really made me happy because a lot of the, as you say, like the the gags in there that are really just about like. The, the rhythm of a paragraph um, yeah. just all came across because he had that instinct for it and uh, the kind of dialect, I guess, it was written in. So, yeah, uh, Paul, Paul was a hero. He, he really he really sold the uh, the first guy to pull a knife in a bar fight kind of voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the last. <laughs> yeah, and the last. It, it, was, it was a very enjoyable way of telling it, and it was... Uh, Though, though it was it was nice that whenever we went from interrogation to Makari, like like I did like the Makari stuff the most definitely, but I was glad that I didn't groan when we got to the interrogation stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, we, uh, it's it's it was enjoyable. Uh, it partic- I particularly liked Hendrickson. I think he did a really good job channeling the space wolf thing because I haven't read a lot about space wolves and he felt proper space wolfy. Yeah. Thanks. It yeah, was... I went to do something different from the kind of like very wolf centric wolf wolf um, wolf yeah yeah mm. so i i really wanted to to s- sort of explore him as this you know weird shaman who was not really at all at ease with what he was um yeah. and he yeah i kind of really got fond of him myself yeah it was weird uh i mean th- this is one of those things you have no control over but the the voicing for hendrickson like at the beginning they have like a different like Nordic voice for Hendrickson when he's over the comms, and then like the main uh, voice actor kind of just took over for Hendrickson, and it was it's, it's kind of weird. Did, did did they? I don't remember that. Yeah, I remember there was like a different VA for Hendrickson at the beginning, uh, where like Hendrickson's like over the comms as they're making that deal with Biter. Um, oh maybe, no, maybe I think you're I'm right. Just it was a fever pitch. I think you might be right. I think it was the gentleman, I, I feel bad, he was only in the one chapter at the end, who voiced yeah. um, the vision that Hendrickson was Yeah, he was voiced doing. the vision at the end, too. But yeah, throughout the rest right. of yeah. it, 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 was, it was just the main... Um, I don't remember the voice actors' names. I'm sorry, you all did such a fantastic job, too. But yeah, it was just that one main person that was doing the voice for uh, Falks, Falks uh, Cassia, and Hendrickson. And Biter. And Biter. Yeah, Which the, is, wow, what a workload. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> that is a lot to, to handle, actually. I was impressed by that. Um, I had I, I had real fun with that first bit, the, the little uh, audio bit at the beginning where they're making the negotiation. Uh, mm. I really like messing around with fonts in my books. Um, and I remember specifically writing Hendrickson's dialogue in grey impact font. Um, I, I, I can't remember what they actually use for the uh, for the final printed product, but in my mind, he definitely speaks in grey impact font. Oh yeah, and man, I've... the price for Macari though. 
What, what like, was it? What was it like? Seven zero and and many 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 guns or something like that. Well, I I was shocked because they they gave up planets to the orcs that weren't expecting an invasion. What was it like? Five planets? They were like, yeah, you gotta give us five planets that aren't expecting an orc invasion that we can just go absolutely maraud. And it's like, whoa, I know the Imperium are the bad guys here, but holy shit, like wow. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm... I love how wild the numbers are in 40k. You know, that if you're doing the trolley problem, like, as an mm. Inquisitor, like, yeah, a, a bunch of, like, no-name aggro worlds probably do mean less than a single piece of intelligence on someone as major as Gasgol. Yeah. And that's, mm -hmm. yeah, just, just brain-melting to think about. Yeah, and Fox makes that decision real quick, and Hendrickson is like, you What?! <laughs> that's too pricey you're crazy that's why i liked hendrix said i think i think fox wasn't a particularly great inquisitor <laughs> i think i I, th I think she was very interesting but i, I i'm like hmm fox you're really you're really you're really going you're going a little too far with some of this stuff i don't think you realize what you're doing i think hendrix has the right idea oh good job your blood axe guys shanked your ogre in the back and and the face and the neck and then and now yep. you're about to get assailed by gaskell god damn it I, I kind of love how, like, the for a majority of the book, it's kind of, I don't want to say lighthearted, but it's like, you know, uh, it's it's an interrogation. Everybody's kind of, you know, jockeying back and forth. It almost seems kind of fun. And then towards the end, it turns into, like, a fucking horror, uh, a, a horror story. Like, the lights are going out. Where is every Why is everybody dead? Why did I wake up to my ogren absolutely slaughtered? Hendrickson is covered in his own gore. What happened? <laughs> Um, so yeah, I kind of like orcs, how the, baby. It, yeah, orcs, <laughs> yeah. man, it goes from fun loving to horror show, just lickety split. And it's like, whoa, holy I shit. <laughs> I fucking loved, um, I, I loved Hendrickson's little shaman, uh, debut that, that I thought was super mm. badass. I, mm -hmm. I, I love that you just go into like, space Marines are often boring. That's why we like chaos. Cause they're less boring. Mm -hmm. And the space, uh, having an enormous space wolf guy pull out a whole bunch of of crazy witch and fucking shit, a shaman like like all this all these like trinkets and stuff, and then starts slicing his body apart is just cool. Yeah, he's not a happy guy. <laughs> Poor, no, I mean, he's I, not. I always think with space marines, like I, I I said when I uh first got to put some in Twice Dead King. Like, I really love writing monsters, and they are such good monsters. Like, oh, yeah. they're so fundamentally messed up and traumatized and just mentally ruined. And sure, they're, yep. they're extremely good at having fights, but, you know, they're the last thing you'd want to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I remember when we when we read Twice Dead King and like they're like, oh my god, the numbers, oh my god, look at this invasion. I was like, oh man, it's gotta be Tyranids. Maybe it's Orc, and they're like, oh my god, there's an Aquila. I was like, it's us? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I remember your reaction to that. I was very happy. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I was, I oh my was, god, they're so bad. <laughs> it, it was properly exciting uh, during that period of time because it's just, I don't, people always forget that the Imperium's a horde army. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. and they they just kind of don't remember that, and it added a lot to it. And it which also makes sense because in in Rain, the main Space Marine threat you used were uh, Death Company, which mm -hmm. are some of the most fucked up Space Marines out there. So it, it works out pretty well. Yeah, I really enjoyed. Like, I was quite satisfied when when I worked that out because I wanted there to be this. You know, I really like mirroring stuff. Um, I know it sounds quite wanky, but like I, I really enjoy having stuff, you know, re reflected across two sides of the narrative. Whatever that happens a lot in Gaskell, but in uh, in Rain, having those Death Company guys faced off against uh, Altix uh, and his merry men, um, there was just <laughs> some quite nice parallels between them. You know, the there's obviously the skull iconography and then you know, being massively removed from their original biological form and having their minds completely twisted inside out with trauma. Um, you know, there were some nice reflections of the Flayed One stuff going on. Uh, good old Death Company. I bought a bunch of Death Company, actually, while I was writing that. 
Um, Hell yeah. That's that's how Black Library gets you as an author. Like you write <laughs> scenes about this stuff and you're like, yeah, yeah, I really wanna I really wanna yeah, paint up a bunch yeah. of plastic models of these guys. You guys so- wanna give me a discount, right? A bulk discount maybe for writing your book? Oh, 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 man. Just the combination of, of GW dropping the, the points costs on Flay 1s to 10, and then these, these two books coming out, I'm like, oh, oh, shit. Oh, we shit. We see you. We the, see the, you. The Flayed <laughs> ones are every, going to be everywhere. Yeah, oh, I've goodness. seen loads of Flayed 1, like, paint jobs and, like, kit bashes and stuff around, and that's been really nice to see. I love hell, those boys. Hell, I, I snagged myself a Seraptic. I was considering making it look like that horrible communion monster uh, when I get the opportunity mm, to. Yeah. But it, unfortunately, mm. it does. It doesn't fit. My, my army is a little bit more like normal looking. Um, but I kind of, I kind of want to just slap make some a new spikes. One. Slap some spikes on that shit. Throw a bunch of, throw a bunch of space marines, like some ultra marines, and <laughs> impale them on the top, and you know, just have a good time. Yes. Do you know the, the uh, PVA and super glue trick? Uh, oh, to make like blood. Um, like, like looks like it looks uh, like, you, like like flesh bits. I, yeah, it looks like stretched skin and stuff. Like it oh. gets used a lot with <laughs> Nurgle armies. Yeah, and it forms this kind of manky membrane that for a bit you can sort of stretch over the model. And uh, I've been doing some experimenting with like flayed one canoptex and stuff, like based on the idea that Seraptech came from. And uh, it's a good effect. It's a real good effect. I've seen some of that stuff. Gross. It's it's not like, yeah, I'm, I'm not good enough to do it yet, but maybe with time. <laughs> you gotta try it's, first, you know. Yeah, it's it's certainly a tough one. Anywho, that's all that's all Necron stuff. We've uh, we've had mm. we've had our fair share of Necron episodes. Necron um, supremacy. Necron supremacy, man. The um though uh, uh back on over to the Gaz book. I, I'm actually I actually felt a little bit of pride as, as I was reading through the book because we had a Gaskell episode prior to reading this book, and I think I was pretty on point. I, I remember him him um going to uh, getting his ha- fe- face blown off, going to Grotznik, mm-hmm. head, uh, having the Deskulls guy miss every shot, headbutting <laughs> Goff. It was I, even I, I'm actually a little sad. That Makari got yeeted outside of the space hope before we got <laughs> to see Gaz uh, headbutt yeah. the fucking portal. Because I really <laughs> liked that particular moment where he just headbutts the portal and it coincidentally closes. Gave me a, it I gave me a solid giggle. They solve with headbutts. It's uh, it's it's a lot of fun. That scene as well with with Gaz fight. There's not the funniest thing. There, there weren't many fights in that book. Because um, I always uh, my wife's always the first person who reads my 40k books because she's not interested in 40k so if she likes it i know i've done all right um oh fair mm. and she finishes it from like there weren't many fights in that uh, <laughs> <laughs> i was like yeah but the the one with the greater demon was was really fun i just watched a bunch mm. of mma um <laughs> clips and just you know the, the the most brutal clobberings i could find and then tried to get that energy yeah. into that scene <laughs> It was a fun one. I like. I, I liked the the concept that all the uh, all the orcs were seeing a bunch of glowy eyed things. I'm like, oh, cool. We're gonna be here forever. <laughs> yeah. I I also kind of love the fact that uh, what was it? So uh, the Makari tells like um, Gaskell's origin story, and it's like, oh yeah, his hand came up out of the snow, ripped a gotch out of the squig, and what? And then, and then, uh, what is, I think Cassia's like, isn't it more likely that they just kind of found him in the snow, passing by, looking for parts, and brought him in the cart? And they're like, yeah. And none of them are, <laughs> are surprised. It's like, oh yeah, there's totally room in an orc's head for two completely contradicting ideas, and it doesn't make their head explode. And it's like, Whoa. orcs are weird. Orcs are so fucking weird. Now, uh, see, if you can hold two ideas in your head at the same time, just means you've got a more muscly brain. Oh my I, god, that's so perfect. <laughs> I, 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 I liked the uh, explanation of why the headbutt is so important, because you're you're using Mork to to hit with Gork. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that, that got me a good yeah, one. It's like, so yeah, great. using using your brains to beat something. I'm like, yeah, that's Mork, smart. Yeah. I never well, thought about that. Gaskell gives his first speech. He calls it a, a beating of the mind. And mm. Makari equates the two things. So, well, a headbutt is ontologically identical to a speech because you're using the thing you think with to make someone else do what you want. 
Um, <laughs> you know, it checks out. <laughs> yep, checks out. Agreed. It, it really does. It's it's a shockingly apt comparison and use. It kind of, it kind of took me off guard. I think the um, yeah, orcs can be wise. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> In their way. I, 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 I did yeah, find it works a, for them. I did find it humorous that eventually Gaz trying to figure out what the gods want from him, and the answer was punch more things. <laughs> yeah. I was like, he's th he, he was thinking too hard. He used to have been thinking less. Yep. It was, it was, it was, it was good. I, I, I enjoyed the book. It was, uh, it was an yeah. interesting time. Um, I'm trying to think, because I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to just be, be on my knees next to you the whole time. I got to think of some things to... Uh, to <laughs> I, I don't want to be on my knees next to you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I gotta think of some criticisms. <laughs> I, I, I got, I got to think of some criticisms. We gotta get here. Go, DK, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. you, you, you talk. You say some things. Oh, oh, oh! Go, 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 go! Be mean to Nate. Go be mean to Nate. Go say, <laughs> Nate. say something stupid, DK. Say something stupid. Um, get it, boss. <laughs> I, I think I, I actually I, gave Makari that line in the book. <laughs> I like when Kari actually spoke. I do like the, the little, the little high pitched way he would speak. Oh yeah, sometimes. Was, he's a grad, of course. Yeah, it was fun. Um, I, I think if anything, I, I would have liked a little, definitely a little bit more of the orc speaking part. But you mentioned that part was was cut a little bit from the final product. Um. You know, I, I do think that despite the characterization of the interrog interrogators were better than, than most, I think I would have either liked more characterization for them, or maybe less. Mm. Like, I, I don't yeah. know, it's weird. If, if it's like, I would have either taken 80-20 Makari or 50-50, where at like 70-30, mm. I think like the needle needed to go in one other direction a tiny bit more. Probably more on the Makari was... side, considering the name of the book. It was totally like a challenge. I think I, I set a bit of um, a big target for myself to to have like proper character progression and stuff happening in both stories. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely, again, you know, that was that was a conversation we had a lot when we we're like, okay, how do we cut this down to size a little bit? Um, and you know, there, there was one point where I was exploring, like, well, do I really cut the uh, the framing device right down to, um, to 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 bare bones in order to fit as much into the Makari stuff, and uh, I think it was in the end deciding to keep you know the scene with uh, with Zotal the the cupbearer, which the really messed mm. up crew. That was um, a lot of we fun. Were... I liked Ooh, that one that a lot. That thing was so gross. Yes, that was, that was that... a good a big <laughs> thumbs up. That was it, and we were like, well, you know, this doesn't strictly need to be there for narrative reasons, but it's really cool, and if we don't get mm -hmm. rid of that, then we should probably keep the rest, and that, you know, it kind of fell into that shape, but I do, I do get what you mean, I think, like, it, it very nearly went down a route where I did go kind of 80-20 uh, with the Makari stuff, definitely. Yeah, I, I feel, I feel like a lot of the interrogators um, had... And maybe just a little bit too exposition heavy for their uh, for their backgrounds. And I think that was probably because you had to cut some stuff. I noticed that especially mm -hmm. at the end when they were talking about, uh, you know, Hendrickson and and, uh, and Volt. I, oh, Fal sorry, oh, wait, wait, I forgot the Inquisitor's name already. Fal Volks. Volks, thank Volks. you. For some reason, I was thinking Volks and I was thinking of the Voten. If you want to write a squat <laughs> book, go to town. Um, but oh, yeah, I, I think. Days, believe me, <laughs> I'd love to. It, they were talking about like their time back in like the Fenrisian bar and stuff like that. And that stuff kind of was really interesting, but it was like, it was like a little peak. And then it kind of went back to the Makari. stuff. it's like, oh, you know, a little bit like trying to figure out the side of it. Um, yeah, but, there yeah. was definitely more there that could have been said. I, yeah, I'm with you. I, I think also is because I, I don't hear much about space wolves because I haven't really read many wolf books. And so seeing the wolf shaman was, was certainly an interesting, uh, apt in comparison. But um, but I pretty I pretty much have very very little to complain about with all the Makari stuff. The Makari stuff was it's pretty mm. solid and, and and elevated by the VA, no doubt. So I'm I'm still relatively new to 40k stuff, and I know orcs have crazy powers of belief. Uh, I was unaware that like uh someone like Gaskell could have a strong enough will that he can like revive a specific orc. Cause like he he keeps reviving specifically Makari, right? 
I didn't mm. I didn't realize that was a thing with orcs. Like I knew that they were uh, fungal and they just keep they they just keep popping up if you leave them alone. I didn't realize you could like actually be like, oh yeah, I want Makari back, and then it's like bloop, and he's got sort of like the the mark on him. I didn't I didn't realize that was a thing until this book. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, you know, writing the stuff you want to leave it as open to interpretation as possible because it's you know it's not really my job to kind of set how yeah. the universe works. But mm -hmm. I think when you've got something as interesting and big and nebulous as like orc just out belief, uh, yeah. there's room to do some weird stuff with it. And there are so many, what I enjoyed and what I kept in my head very much when writing it is to allow, and this is appropriate given the talk about orcs and cognitive dissonance and having multiple ideas in your head, is having multiple different explanations for how that could have happened yeah. that aren't all quite mutually exclusive. Like, they're all kind of possible simultaneously. Yeah. Um, and it, thinking about, like, the Great Green, which, you know, they talk about a lot, and obviously they have that mm -hmm. vision. Um, like, what, what is that? Um, yeah. Is it entirely a metaphor? Uh, is it actually a thing? Is it some kind of, you know, cloud storage system for orc <laughs> ideas? Um, yeah. you know, is, is Makari like just uploaded to G drive and, yeah. and then, like, he you just re-downloads it every time he breaks. Yeah. Is G drive is Gork yeah. drive? Hey, 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 we'll be here all, that all week. Put that in there. We'll be here on, is, we'll be here on Wednesday. Is Gasco even like doing it consciously, uh, or is it just happening organically? Um, cause there's obviously there's. The bit where Makari comes back during Gaskell's second go at Armageddon, and it's because Bullets and the boys have been kind of whining, like, where's that Makari? We miss him. And yeah. Ga Gaskell sort of does it sarcastically, but even his sarcasm, like, yep. even something he doesn't really mean is enough to bring Makari back. Yeah, but that's right. Makari has intended. that little... Yeah, Makari has that little moment of, oh, he brought me back is just a joke. Just because he's got such a strong will, I just kind of came back as a joke. What oh, a man. flex, right? Oh, man. <laughs> but it's Gaskell, so you could totally believe, because he's, look, he's he's literally built different. So you could totally believe that crazy-ass big old Gaskell is just like, ah, offshoot idea, and it's like, oh, his will is so strong. Whoop. There's Macari. So yeah. there's the sort of the interconnected thing with with orc will and belief as well. Gaskell obviously is a phenomenally uh, willful individual, but he's also mm. uh, like a capacitor. I guess he's like a lightning rod for wider, um, you know, desires and stuff in in the horde that's following him. Because you have that scene um, where he's kind of having a crisis of faith on Armageddon. He's like, well, I'm mm -hmm. not sure the gods believe in me. And if the gods don't believe in me, the boys won't believe in me and I won't believe in myself. And it's all kind of connected together. Yeah. So it's like every orc, like believing in Makari as well. And it's funny, you mentioned earlier, the, 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 the sort of, um, the backstory about him getting sat on another scene that didn't quite make it in by one of you someday is, uh, Makari getting resurrected at some point, just like a a grot cleaning the drops, which are the the orc lavatories, and mm -hmm. uh, the idea that he's just like cleaning up turds, and he hears two boys above who are just sat there talking, and they're like, "Whatever happened to that Makari? Yeah, <laughs> funny little fella. I heard he got sat on by a squig." No, I, you know, and they're, they're sort of <laughs> sharing these different theories about what happened to him. Makari's just nodding along because all these, all of these things have happened to him. <laughs> they're all true. <laughs> it's like that Han Solo. It's true. All of it. Yep. Moment. Um, yeah, that would have been fun to get in. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I enjoyed him beating <clears throat> beating himself to death with a wrench. That, that was <laughs> that that was that would give me a good a giggle Jesus. too. I. I I would have, I actually would have enjoyed if if you extended for a couple more pages his montage of killing himself. I, yeah, I think again, that that would that, have been that, a great like happy death day kind of thing. Yeah, I had a real image of that in my head as well. Um, there was going to be one where he woke up um, 
in the middle of like a pit fight where uh, you know uh, Nasdreg, the the big big bad moon orc. Um, yeah. He was going to be in the story a little bit, and there was going to be the sequence during that you know uh, Makari bends himself montage where like Gasgor and Nasdreg <laughs> are making their beefiest grots fight each other as part of like entertainment at a feast. And Makaru was going to wake up as one of the Grots and just completely and utterly job the fight, um, letting Nasdreg's got Grot win to humiliate Gasgor and just like Damn. looking at Gasgor as it happens, like, yeah, screw you, get wrecked. <laughs> it, isn't, it is kind of funny too, because I know that in the in the actual tabletop game, uh, Makari has like one of the most overpowered rules in the game. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I I'm not sure. I know I know. I don't, wait, Nan, I'm assuming you're not too familiar with the tabletop stuff. Um, no, I I do a lot of um, hobby stuff, but I barely ever get to play. <laughs> so he has a rule called suspiciously lucky, which it makes it so that uh, he has a thing called a two up and vulnerable save, and and what that is is basically like everyone has armor and crap like that. In the game, and the armor can be adjusted by arm penetration, but in vulnerable saves like force fields, things like that, and they're, you know, that kind of thing. Um, any uh, uh, anything that's like a, a dice of a four or higher is considered pretty good. Things that are a three or higher are basically non-existent now. They're only existent on like Harlequin Solitaires and like Kaldor Drago. And so he has a so a two up. So every time he gets hurt in any way. And if you roll a dice and it's a two or higher, he's totally fine. And because he's fantastic. just a lucky ass grot. <laughs> and, and, but it says if if you uh, if you fail it at any point, it goes away for the rest of the game. But he also has this weapon called Makari's Stabba, and it does like no damage at all. But if you roll a six for it, it could do enough damage to like kill multiple Marines. It's Checks fucking out. hilarious. I absolutely adore it. <laughs> it's very Makari. And he has a little rule that gives him increased movement when he's next to Gaskell, and it's called Keep Up. It's great. <laughs> yeah. It's great. I, yeah, I love I it. Yeah, I referenced that in the, the book, actually, when they're on the Hulk, um, clearing out all the demons and that. Makari is, like, running for sort of three days straight, and he's like, this shouldn't be possible, but I keep doing it. And all the orcs <laughs> like, yeah, go on, how long's he going to keep up? Come on, little guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't quite understand how this pathetic little creature is still sprinting about yep, with the carrying, best of them after three days. Carrying the big old banner. The um, I, I also I actually like I'm I actually like Grotznik. At the end, I started to enjoy Grotznik mm. a bit more. He didn't have a whole yeah. lot of screen time, but he had he was a lot more fun coming at the end. Oh yeah, he, yeah, that was fun to write. He's painted as a villain for so long. Oh, he just wants to make the prophet suffer. And then it's like, no, 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 no. I'm the reason that what's his face his shots all missed, and I've been building up this new body for him. And he's uh, he's uh, he's all right actually. He's, he's okay. Well, no, I mean he does also really enjoy making the prophet suffer. <laughs> I, I was about to say, I disagree, DK. Fair. I think he's kind of a shitter. <laughs> Well, yeah, he's like he's a complete bastard. He's just a sadist. But at the same time, if Gasgol wasn't suffering so much, if he wasn't, you know, if Grotznik wasn't like leaving scorpions and syringes or whatever in his head when he sewed it up each time, <laughs> he fair. wouldn't be having these huge visions. Like, you know, his pain and his madness is a huge part of what drives him and inspires him. Yeah. And so that's that's kind of a necessary piece of the puzzle. Isn't isn't that what Grotznik says kind of towards the end? Like yeah, he's, he's yeah. a sadist, but he's like, if it wasn't for me, like he wouldn't he wouldn't he wouldn't have that sort of crazy madness and the vision that makes him so strong. So see, he was a good guy all along. DK's right. Let's go. <laughs> well, yeah, God. it's like the trolley problem again, isn't it? It's uh, yeah. it's back to you know, does Falks give up the ten planets? Um you know, in order to get that one bit of intel, it's, uh, there you go. I told you, reflecting stuff makes me sound really <laughs> clever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the or orcs and their cleverness. They're so clever. <laughs> orcs are so clever. I, I, I what, was the, what was the one part? Um, ah, crap, I'm trying to remember. Oh, you know, I actually really enjoyed the part when the sun went out. 
That was uh, that, mm. that was kind of frightening in like a like a creepy existential way, because you know you, you have those uh, simulations and some of those movies and stuff where our sun goes out and like the slow heat death of the planet, and just that kind of concept there when you know Gaz just standing out on the balcony and all that was really that, that was a really interesting little segment there. I thought that was uh, I thought that was cool and it it really felt like a genuine doomsday. Oh yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I've been playing Frostpunk a whole bunch. If you Let's fucking that game. go. Oh, Did you sign child labor? Moment. Did you sign child labor? I always sign child labor. Yeah, of oh, course. Yeah, oh, let's no. go. Oh, no. Fuck them kids. It's so grim dark. It's 40k, all right. Oh, I, I I did a video on Frostpunk a bit of go. I absolutely adore that game. It's one of my favorite yeah, city too. builders ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the atmosphere in that is completely wild, and um, oh. but yeah, that that was definitely a design choice going into writing that chapter. I, Hell yeah! Damn, no, no wonder I, see I it enjoyed now. it. Uh, yeah. Also, Shy had a uh, little blurb. She said, uh, "It's not a criticism, but I guess the most controversial thing about this book will be orcs' gender being they them, as they only been established as males before, despite the fact they are asexual fungi. I don't really have gender." Personally, I was interpreted this contradiction as orcs are genderless, but they chose to consider themselves as males. Yeah. I always thought it was like the, football, the, 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 the football hooligan kind of thing, yeah, where you just assume mm -hmm. that it's like a bunch of brash, brash dudes having a pint at a, or, or 20 at a, at a game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's it's pretty much, I would say, the way I look at it aligns with Shire's. Um, <clears throat> that gag was basically because I wanted them to have a little scrap about it. Um, and it was really about Baita showing off how much he knows about humans. Because Baita's mm. like, um, he's like a weeb for, for <laughs> humans, basically. And yep, he wants yep. to show them how much he knows about their culture. And so even though like among themselves, so in Orc language, like, as I would see it, they they probably just got one pronoun they use, and yeah, like I haven't really thought about it too much. I don't think I said anything about it in the book, but I think the point is it's Baita saying, okay, I'm going to translate this as accurately as possible, and since mm. I know that humans have this whole sex and gender thing, I am not gonna, you know, I'm I'm going to show I know about that, so I'm going to keep calling every orc they. And that, like, obviously really annoys Hendrickson. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, well, you know, just use he, please. And yeah, Baita does that. But I think he had just that moment of pride in being like, ah, you know, look how much I know about your, you know, language and culture ah. and stuff. So I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be a real stickler about this. And I'm going to wait for you to correct me because I know that you all say he about orcs. So he doesn't really care either way. He's just trying to big himself up. <laughs> He's a humor boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love that. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm I'm a, I'm a huge I'm a huge uh, shy man statement. Yeah, I'm I'm a big Blood Axe fan. I particularly just enjoy the the shenanigans that they always get themselves into, and it's also kind of funny just to see this giant green orc with like a like a mil like a general's coat with a whole bunch of oh. random medals and stuff. It's just <laughs> like that kind of laughable interpretation of a human is really yeah. funny. You um, his own wanna medals, read, yeah. You definitely want to read the enemy of my enemy. There's one point where um the orc general and the human general are in the <clears throat> like tactical bunker in that and the human general's trying to think and he's getting really distracted by the orc moving a model Lehman Russ around like the strategic table going <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Will you stop that? That's the three hundred and third armored division. <laughs> and he's just the going like, just like, like da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yeah, just like knocking over other regiments. Yeah. With it and stuff. Like, this is a serious representation of the battlefield. Can you please stop? <laughs> that's, that is great. That's I fun. It. Yeah, I, I absolutely should in that case. Yeah, that that sounds like a good time. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I, I mean, War, Warhammer fans are a colorful bunch, and they they've got a lot of old think and. Um, you know, I, I can, I know that some people were all, you know, angry, being angry, sad, annoying people about that whole little, little scene stick there. But it was, it was pretty quick and pretty quick and done with. I guess I, I did, when I read it, I did think it was a, a little, a little like out of place in terms of uh, pacing. 
for for the book yeah. kind of came out it kind of came out of nowhere and in, 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 a, in a weird sense but it wasn't anything mm. particularly bizarre i know you had a similar quick um talk like that uh for the necrons or uh, like a necron mm. uh patriarch and matriarch thing and i really liked that it was quick and really concise and i was like huh interesting and then we kind of went along and i like oh, that was that was good yeah. also yeah that um, was received I mean, exactly how i would hoped it would be received yeah yeah, that that was it was very quick, tasteful. I loved it. I mean, Fox Fox was was gay as well. It was just lesbian, but that was very very quick and simple as well. I liked her little uh, jab about being in a in a comfortable ass quarters with a with an attractive servant girl. <laughs> that yeah, gave she me, really that gave regrets me a good yeah. the life she's chosen for herself. A <laughs> yeah. Lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could tell she was not having a great time with her with her life decisions. She's like, man, yeah. this sucks. I'm interviewing this this conniving little prick across the way with this shit eating grin for 22 hours. And things go very south on that ship. That oof. they do. I, I love I love how Biter just leaves. Like he just never like he's just gone. He doesn't have like a like a final goodbye or anything. Like unfortunately, Cassia does does die. But he's just like oh no, alarms are going. Oh, Biter's gone. I'm like fucking blood. Where the fuck did Biter go? Fucking See, blood uh, axe. My head canon for that at the end with Bieta is because a lot of people have said, like, you know, why, why kill Cassia? It's just needless. And you know, it was, you know, did you write that just to sort of pull the heartstrings? And honestly, in my head, well, for the one part, he stole Cassia's key. Uh, but why choose Cassia? Um, I like to think in Bieta's own head, he was just, you know being a, a cool, helpful guy. Because um, he really likes humans, right? And there's that whole thing about how there shouldn't be Ogryn Psychers, you know, uh, a, 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 according to, you know, objective truth as it's understood in the Imperium, it's not mm. possible for an Ogryn to be a Psyker. You know, but, but now Psychic Awakening, these things are happening. So Bieter in his own head is just, well, yeah, I, I, I guess I'll reestablish um, the objective truth of the Imperium while I'm here and you know, get rid of the Ogren Psyker. And now the, hmm. the, the truth is reaffirmed. There are none. Uh, which he probably <laughs> thinks is doing a favor. And again, you know, Orc psychology is just very different. Yep. Yes, That's no right, because the Imperium was like, oh yeah, you know, we, we need to execute Cassia when she didn't have a name. Because, yeah, the Imperial Truth says these things aren't supposed to exist. And it took like a last minute saving from, I think it was Falks, right, that saved her? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's 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 how she got there because they were going to execute her to uphold the imperial truth, which is such a wacky idea. And God, the Imperium are bastards. I I must yeah. I, I must admit, just thought he was doing them a favor. <laughs> I, yeah. I must I must admit I, the idea of an Ogren Psyker just feels like running around with a live bomb not strapped in the back of a pickup <laughs> truck. Like that's fucking horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> the concept of an, ogre, so of an chill, ogre inside. She is yeah. so chill, but Cassie is different. I, I can't I can't imagine just being on the battlefield with like a Bulgrin, the commissar, and then it just happens to end up being a psyker, and the Bulgrin is just like, I got him, boss, and then like zaps it with his mind. And like yeah. and the the commissar is saying they're like, Oh my god, what has happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's such it's such shenanigans, but it's a it, it was a fun one. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sad Cassia went. I think I think maybe I, I wish there was just a bit more of like a finality to it. It de it definitely came a little bit out out of uh, out of left field, um, yeah, a little out of the blue. Or if anything, I wouldn't have mind uh, minded seeing the battle or like being being told of the battle uh, during that period of time because it was just been it would have been interesting. I would have liked to have heard any of Biter's uh, dialogue. During that kind of mm. thing, I, I kind of wonder what he would say as a as a blood axe. For <laughs> yeah, for what it's worth, I imagine it was weirdly polite. Like... That's what I imagined it as too. Yeah, <laughs> kind of normal. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm really sorry about this, but according to the Imperial truth, you can't exist. <laughs> stab, 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 with a sieve, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, maybe, or maybe he's jealous because the Ogryn is both an, a Humi and big. And then he's yeah. like, it's like, you're everything I wanted to be. Die. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, he definitely yeah. said no, no hard feelings, but like botched it. So it'd be like, you know, no difficult feelings or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> It's like uh, no no art emotions or some crap. He just made, made yeah, the wrong words. 
I like I like how he would just occasionally I like how you take his hat off and just put it over his chest and he's like he was a good man that what was his name strategic <laughs> yeah oh the 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 guy he clearly murdered to steal his position yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he well, the, the respect is real as well that's blood yeah. axis <laughs> I like how Gasco got to or strategic basically right to his uh, face to give him a knife. He's like, "Oh shit, yeah, I'll join you. I don't want to get stabbed." <laughs> <laughs> it was very enjoyable. Yeah. yeah, blood axes. I'm glad you like blood axes. Um, I'm making a lot of blood axe stuff at the moment. I just, uh, you know, those huge bucket wheel excavators from Germany. Like the oh, oh, yeah, yeah. meter long Leviathans. I just bought a model kit of one of those, <clears throat> which I'm going to do up as an enormous orc battle fortress. Um, oh, hell but that's yeah. going to be a Blood X thing, so I want to have like helipads on it and things like that. Um, that's it's going to be yeah. a super fun model. Snaky kits. That's not, that, that, sounds, that sounds like a good time. I'm trying to find more like uh, bits I can, I can somehow give my orcs like jackets and, and hats and and various other Hume paraphernalia. I kind of wanted to do one where there's all a whole bunch of like garbage cans and you can just like barely oh, nice. see the ears sticking out of the top or something <laughs> yes. of the, of the orc cause they're, cause they're being, they're, they're hiding and being sneaky and on the garbage can. You could just write like not orc. <laughs> What's worth uh, knowing for the coats and things, a bunch of world war two kits are in like a scale that's slightly bigger than 40k but because um because orcs have such weirdo proportions and 40k is in like heroic scale anyway it means like the torsos of the crew for vehicles and things in these kits are actually the same size as an orc torso and a lot of them have got like great coats with the lapels and stuff so if you can do some rudimentary green stuff work uh that's a good way of, of getting officer coats and stuff for your orcs there you go yeah, that, that, yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. green stuff scares me, but I I do agree. <laughs> but I'm I'm uh, fear. That's, that's again, the next that step is, in your evolution is green stuff, dude. Dang it, dude! I mean, I've built an entire fucking sister's armory. Those bitches are impossible to paint. Oh my god! Yeah, you so can maybe, green maybe, stuff. I can. You're right. I can. You can do it. Do it. Positive I affirmation. Do you it. got this. Yeah, I got this. Goes and buys green I, stuff. Immediately dries it out. <laughs> I believe in you. Gasgol believes in you, and that's that's a lot of belief. Oh isn't it? well, so. if, if Gasgol believes you can do it, you got this. You got. This. You've already done it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How how'd you uh, how'd you feel about the ending, Bricky? Like the very end with uh, uh, Makari wants them to kill him, throws him in prison, and then uh oh, orc fleet, and then all the lights go out and it's just green. I, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I was I was a little disappointed by the ending. You mm. the, in your your last two twice dead books, you've made some fucking incredible endings. The the final stand of Jaceres and the flayed ones ripping through the the human vessel was like ten out of ten exciting. So much fun, really ac like action packed, like a lot of emotional weight behind them. Like it was a it was a crescendo. It reminded me of like the the suicide mission of Mass Effect Two. Like it's all come together, you know. Um, oh, nice comparison, yeah. Is yeah, you very, you very like that comparison. Mass Effect Two is his <laughs> <is> high regard, <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it it felt a little a little sudden. I, I think I would have yeah. liked some some big mm. battle or or maybe maybe a bit like of a of a fully longer told battle of Gaz and Ragnar, like something a little bit more epic to really tie the bow on it. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the ending was fine, but it, it didn't have that. Maybe it's my expectations reaching me, but it didn't have that, like, that ping, that final, like, stamp that I was really hoping for. Yeah, uh, yeah it was definitely more about the journey for me. So, yeah, that's mm. that's fair, I think. More about the journey than the destination. Yeah. Uh, Shai said she was about to get angry at the ending when Humies were about to win, but then the last couple sentences made her happy. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah, very yeah. clear that the Humies were not going to win. The Humies were coming, and they were, they were going to yep. cause real problems. Yep, 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 yeah, yep, like yep, the yep. best case scenario there is that Falx and Hendrickson do get away with Makari, but I'm I'm not really sure that puts them in an amazing situation. Uh, yeah. You know, 
So, I did. I did yeah. like. I, I did like that they were able to use what they learned throughout the book to kind of outsmart Makari a little bit because you you know he was just grinning ear to ear like, "Hey, kill me, do it. I'll just go back to the boss and tell him where you all are." Yep. You know, that, I mean, but, I'm uh, sure that was the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah so that, he was, that was expecting that was them to act like inquisitors, right? So it's kind of funny that you picked up on the fact that yeah, Falx perhaps isn't the best at her job. By a lot of definitions, but yeah. in the end, that's her one saving grace in this situation. Because if she had done her job by the book, that really would have played into into Makari's hands. Yeah. So you know, she kind of kind of redeems herself uh, by by making one last mistake in a string of mistakes, I guess. Yep. I, I enjoyed uh, Hendrickson's temper at the end too. You made him <laughs> sound proper frightening. Like, oh, like yeah. he, he looked like Definitely. he was ready to fucking throw hands. It was, it was good. And, and yeah, I was about to say, the, uh, uh, what Shai just mentioned is that in the battle between Gaz and Ragnar, yeah, Ragnar does have that jumping, like, like mid, mid-air hero pose kind of thing with his sword. Does he? I haven't seen Ragnar's mini. Oh, no? Here, I'll, I'll, I'll get him for you. I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, this is great. Shai's picking up all the... It's it's the details, man. It's the little details. There's yeah, so when, many when little you references have, to things. When you have Shai this giddy over all of the little details and all of these sort of, you know, fans complaining about Makari and the submersibles, you know you've made a good orc book. Because usually, you know... <clears throat> I'm going to put Shy a little bit on She She didn't even read the books, usually. Uh, but this one, she was proper giddy. Like, she was on Bricky's ass to read this book. Yep, yep. It's like, you know what we're reading next? We're reading, we're reading the orc books. I want an orc book. <laughs> meh, 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 meh. <laughs> Whining sounds. So when you get Shy this excited about orc shit, you, you know you got a winner. You know. Yeah, well, I, yeah I, I bung that book full of Easter eggs. There's lots of... You know, there's lots and lots and lots of little, little references to, you know, I suppose, like, memes from the hobby before people even talked about memes, which is making me sound as old as I am. But, yeah, there's, there's a lot of that sort of stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Ra I don't know why, but Ragnar looks like a slimy motherfucker. Like, he looks like... She's, I don't like Ragnar. That's just the way I space am, wolves look, am, dude. They're they're greasy sons of bitches. Uh, yeah, but he just looks. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm all about thousands of them. Like, oh, that space wolf looks disgusting. Well, you just uh, think all space wolves look disgusting. Yeah, you play, I do. You but play he looks. He, I don't know. What, I don't know what it is about him, but he just looks like a a villainous kind of guy, and I don't. I don't. I don't like him. And now I'm just like, man, this slimy, greasy douchebag cut off Gaz's head. That's bullshit. I mean, yeah, but if you're all about <laughs> Thousand Sons, you know, your idea of like, this is, you know, peak physical performance, deal with it, is a suit of armor full of dust. So. <laughs> <laughs> they we're not the sorcerers, okay? Call, call, sorcerers call, are still called, alive ish. Called out DK easily. Hey, and and, and what, of course, he looks like Magnus? a greasy. Huh? What about he's Magnus? Got, he's, he's got a big, nipple he's a horns. Yeah, because he's got so much beef. But, but, buddy, I don't know where I'm going. Buddy, of course he looks know. like a villain. He's part of the Imperium. They're not good yeah. people. Yeah, but I don't know. He like Gilliman looks fine, but this I mm, Gilliman's like a boy scout. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I don't, like, oh. I don't like him. I, I think uh I think I think we're I think we're rounding them down here. Uh, is there anything yeah. else that uh Shy or UDK you wanted to get in? Nate, any final closing uh I don't know, things you wanted to say, questions for us, etc. Uh no, other than to say thanks again for having me on. It's 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 a lot of fun to talk about the book. I um I really, really, really enjoyed writing it, even though I was doing it in the sort of middle of twenty twenty when like my brain was falling apart and it was like, mm. you know, middle of the pandemic, like just worst time psychologically to be doing anything really involved. So it was really tough, uh, but I still had a great deal of fun with it. So it's, yeah, I'm just really glad you had fun too. And um, I'm looking forward to writing more. I, I, I think, I think we're the ones that are most thankful that you uh, decided to uh, put up with our uh, inane <laughs> antics for the morning for a whole hour plus. Like In not... That takes some mental fortitude. Like, not everybody can handle us for that long. Inane yeah, is the time. word I would use. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Inane, insane, any combination of those letters works. So yeah. Insane in the brain. Insane in the number. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. yep. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, Hi, Shy's yeah. final thoughts, book good. Very orky of you, Shy. Well done. We've done it. Very e- excellent. We've done it. We've done it. Excellent. You, good you job. You did the boys proud. Done good. Nice things. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I <laughs> really... don't tread on any landmines on the way out. I, I really would like to... Uh... There's a just a Gene Steeler cult model that has like a like a war table with it. I kind of want to get that bit and then make like a little and then like draw like a little Lehman Russ and have like a blood axe with his hand on the table. It's like, hey, for real? I haven't seen that miniature. I want that. Yeah, um, I think it's. Oh the- damn it! You've just cost me more money, boys. Damn, I have. <laughs> um, actually, yeah. What, let me let me see if I can find the, the name of that thing. I think it's the Gene Steeler uh, Nexus or Locus. Uh, Locus? No. Nexus? Uh, oh, I think it is. Um, wait, that yeah, the, 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 ne- the Nexus. It's, uh, or ne- Nexus. It's, uh, here's the link. He's got, like, a little, little war table. Yeah, and it's, nice. like, this little, little stuff going on there. So, and he's got a big oh. old base. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you could very easily do that. Have a, have a uh, little, yeah. little tank there, you know? Yeah. There you I go. like it. Thank you. Hell Options yeah. exist now. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Nate, if there anything you'd like to shout out, if you have a, if you either have a Twitter or if you just want to uh, recommend or mention some of your other books and you want to make, make some some discussion there, be our guest. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Frog Croakley, um, F R O G C R O A K L E Y. Um, and uh, if you are interested in my non 40k stuff, I had a book out uh, in 2020 um, called Notes from Small Planets, which was a fictional travel guide uh, to a bunch of fantasy worlds I'd invented. Uh, and it's pretty funny. I like it. Um, well, apparently, it's pretty funny. That's, uh, you know, not my own judgment. <laughs> but you, yeah. can, you can't uh, be like, my book is really funny. Laugh. It's perfect. Uh, you have to buy it. Yeah, no, that's me. Um, and yeah, I've got. Can't talk about anything that's uh, that's coming out, but I've, I've got stuff in the works with Black Library. So look forward to Ooh. that being revealed in the not too distant. So yeah. Awesome. Hey. Very good to hear. Um, me and DK, you know where we, you can find. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, the usual. Are. No one gives a shit. And uh, no. we'll uh, we'll be mentioning the next book for the book club in the next episode of Adrix. So stick around on next Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be a really big episode. So get excited, DK, because it's going to. Oh. This is a this is a big one. We've been waiting on for a bit. Oh, it's a big episode, and Bricky gets to choose. Must be a sister's episode. Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs>